Today is the end of the week, Friday, July 17th, and the only thing this tells me is that the NASDAQ is where all the action is. Uh, very little volume in the Dow and the S&P 500, and the Dow did the opposite today that the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 uh, did, whereas the Dow was never able to recover from the initial drop the NASDAQ did and ended higher, and so did the S&P 500. I've got a new chart that I want to show you, and I'll show you in a second. Um, but here is the oscillator data, and you can see that the oscillator really didn't change all that much, just a few points. In fact, the raw numbers are um, 3781 and 37226, so really it didn't change at all. The um, volume continues to look pathetic. Volume was the same as it was Thursday, and so we've had two days in a row with the lowest volume in the week. And the advancers and decliners. So this is our advancers decliners um, volume chart, just a little uptick. So nothing to see. We're really looking for a change in the moving average. But this is the new chart. This looks at the days when the advancers are greater than decliners but the volume of the decliners is greater than the advancers. So it's not what you would expect to see. So if it's a score of zero, it means that the advancers, sorry, the decliners and the declining volume were in line. Score of two is the advancers led decliners and the advancers volume led the declining volume. But a score of one is when that's imbalanced. And in every case where you see a value of one, it's where the advancers were higher than the decliners, but the declining volume was higher. So combining the zeros and the ones, because those would be negative days, uh, the ones are negative days that are hidden because the advancing number of stocks is greater than the declining. So what's being hidden is the, the bad news is that the declining volume was greater than the advancing volume even though the advancing number was greater than the declining. So we look for, see this big gap in here that occurred um, right in January where you had a one, a whole bunch, a couple of zeros, a one, a couple more zeros, uh, then you had a two, then you had a one, a one, a few more zeros, but this, the the, the bars start to get spread out, and that might have been a warning for what was going to come here, this drop. But when you have this thick cluster, where you have, look at this cluster in here, uh, basically between here and here, when the market is nice and healthy and ticking up, you've got a lot of strong blue bars. You only have a couple of these number ones. But look what's happening since the beginning of June. These bars are starting to get spread out. And it's starting now to look like it was looking at the beginning of the year. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And if we don't see these clusters of uh, twos reappearing pretty soon, if we keep getting zeros and ones, then that will signal for us that we may be in for one of these. So just look at the thinness of the bars in here and then the thickness of the bars as we moved up into a healthy market. And now we're starting to getting into a thinning again. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, quick look at the charts because not a lot changed. The Dow Jones pulled back from 78.6. The NASDAQ um, pulled back from its 138.2, uh, this is the coronavirus 138.2, uh, that seems to be uh, as much as she wanted to give us. Uh, exceeded it one day, but didn't close there, closed below it. So we haven't been able to close above the 138.2 Fibonacci of the coronavirus wave. And the volatility index took a little bit of a drop. Uh, Apple. Um, really didn't do very much today. It, it did recover a little bit off of its lows. Um, Netflix is the one, of course, that got pounded, but ended up 
being down only 7%. It was down 10% at one point. Caterpillar, um, Caterpillar, I'm, I honestly believe now that we've completed this Gartley, Caterpillar is going to slowly start to pull back. So let's take a look and see where the cloud is in relation to that. It's pretty long way off. And we haven't come back and tested the cloud with, uh, with Caterpillar in a long time. So let's see, that's going to depend on some infrastructure spending. And that isn't happening. The spending is going into the pockets of the unemployed, not infrastructure. And of course, China um, is not in any mood to buy Caterpillar tractors from the United States. FCX, um, just channeling under that double top 100%. Uh, Home Depot ticked up a little bit more, uh, finished with its, finished with, so closed today on a new high right here. So that's pretty strong for Home Depot. Uh, Facebook, 127.2 is the bogeyman there. Um, so we've got Fibonacci levels that are capping our growth in stocks. Um, banks looked miserable. Uh, it wasn't a very, it was a pretty good bank's earning week, except for a couple of banks, Bank of America and Citibank, um, and of course, Wells Fargo. Um, but the big banks, uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, were down almost 1.7, 1.6%, and Citigroup down 2%, and U.S. Bank Corp down 4%. So the banks are down. Um, just play it tight to the chest. I now have um, cash in the tune of about, um, got my spreadsheet closed, but I would say I've got cash in the tune of about 15 to 20% right now. And last week I had no cash. I was actually, um, I had margin outstanding. So I sold some Apple uh, got rid of my margin, invested in the uh, August 145, uh, sorry, uh, 345 short puts in Apple, and they're doing nicely. So that's it for now. I would say um, if I was looking to do anything, it would be to increase my cash position.